Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> so many familiar faces in chat, still hanging out. Thank you folks so much for uh, sticking around after the challenge. Welcome in, newcomers. My name is Voodoo Val, and I'm going to be your host for this drawing and painting session, and I'm joined by the wonderful Stephen Green again. How are you, sir? Doing great. Awesome. Hello, awesome. everyone. <laughs> well, before we jump into uh, a little bit about Stephen and uh, recap what he did yesterday and talk about what we're doing today, um, I'm gonna do a few uh, housekeeping points. I wanna remind everyone that we are not the only thing on the broadcast today. We've got a whole day uh, of design coming up after us. Uh, I was just here with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge uh, just 30 minutes before. And now I'm here with Steven again uh, for our second and final day of drawing and painting. Uh, and then we will have the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge with Julian Crespo coming up right after us. And Claire will round out the day uh, with XD workflows and pro tips um, at the end, which will be super, super cool. So definitely stick around, uh, all of you designers, all you UI UX folks and uh, illustrators. There's gonna be super cool stuff going on for the rest of the day. Um, so without further ado, <laughs> that look, you're just kind of like, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> um, so what are we? Um, well, maybe we can talk about what we did yesterday, and then we can talk about what we're gonna be maybe doing today. So I know you you worked on kind of like a Hellboy illustration. Yeah, yesterday. yeah, just doing a fun comic book style drawing. Um, I did all the penciling yesterday, kind of laid it out, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and I might tighten up a couple things, and then I'm gonna pull out some inking brushes, digital ones, nice. uh, and. Uh, See how far we can get on uh, finishing this drawing. Up. Nice. We've got a, a super like totally candid like Paco thing going on here, and I'm living for it. I hope I you know there's gonna be memes now because they've got like like your whole upper torso on the stream now. <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna be meme famous, Paco. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so we'll probably get into um, a little bit more of that. We'll dive into the work for today. But first, I would love to show off your uh, Instagram uh, and show everybody where they can find you. I know that you do have a Behance, which is listed below the video player. So if you mm -hmm. folks scroll down, you can find his Behance. Uh, but I understand that you post most of your work on your Instagram, correct? Currently, yeah. Currently. yeah it's a good place um, to throw some things out there. and. So this is where I'm gonna direct folks, just so that we can look through. So he's got a little baby Hellboy, little tiny Hellboy. What, what did we say yesterday? We had like... Kid precious, Hellboy. Yeah, like precious baby boy Hellboy, <laughs> and then like medium buff Hellboy, right. and then extra big boy Hellboy, and like right. all these, you know. We came up with some some really interesting He never things. becomes Hellman, no matter how no, old he gets. he really doesn't, does he? It's not even when he has his crown. He's no. never Hellman. No. Uh, I just don't understand. That's, yeah, we're gonna restart it. Um, and uh, we are just chilling and figuring out the iPad so we can show you guys some super cool art. But in the meantime, I can actually browse through some pretty. Yeah, we can talk about some of those stuff. and uh, you know. So this. Hmm. Chris Cornell. Yeah, from Soundgarden. Oh, uh, you know. oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. This is just grunge icon. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I did that for a, a collector, a, a friend of mine as well, and uh, wow. you know, a lot, so a lot of those pieces on there would be commissioned pieces. Mm -hmm. um, That's beautiful. And some, uh, most of the stuff on there, I would maybe start digitally, uh -huh. um, and I finish them obviously on paper. Yeah, on paper, yeah. yeah. So, so when you wait, so you start them digitally, mm -hmm. and then you do you print them out and finish them mm -hmm. on paper? That is so it, wild. Like yeah. I don't think I've ever I don't I don't I feel like I don't meet a lot of people that do that. It's usually the exact opposite where they start it on paper and then scan it in and you know ink it in Photoshop or Fresco or something and that's really cool. By the way, I I am so in love with just kind of the movement and motion of this trail of leaves. Oh yeah. Around yeah. here. That is so cool. Um I don't know what it what made you choose these leaves for this? Because I feel like when I think of these leaves, I never really think of a moose and vice versa. Yeah, <laughs> um, that was just elements that I like. So mm -hmm. I like birds. Mm -hmm. I like monstera plants. Mm -hmm. um, I like the occasional moose. I call them meese. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I think irks a lot of people because it's totally incorrect. Yeah, it is. Um, and, and uh, you know, but... Uh, Keep using it and it'll become a colloquialism with any luck. And yeah. Moose, or it's plural, meese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
which makes them seem a lot smaller right. than they are. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're very, they're, they're quite large. They're enormous, folks. They're very large animals, and I, it wasn't until I actually like saw like the the outline, like life outline of a moose, and stood next to it that mm. I realized just how large they are. Mm. And I think I had this like Disney Channel like understanding of a moose. It's just like, oh, it's like a deer, but rounder. It, no. It's it, not. <laughs> no, they're large. That one I drew to life size. I saw a really small one one day and uh Wait. Yeah. Like No, I'm just kidding. Okay, I was like, um, that's, not, that's a lot of work. <laughs> um but yeah, we've got a lot of really fantastic this is see that's that's um would be like extra large Hellboy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just above um medium buff Hellboy. Yeah, yeah, with a tree. <laughs> yeah. With a tree, I guess. I like trees, I like animals and stuff, you know. I this reminds me of the Sleepy Hollow tree. Oh yeah. I like the like the gnarled like twist and turn of the wood. It's really really cool. Um the occasional moose, Mario says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if he was in the Star Wars universe, it would be from Mustafar. No! Oh. It begins! There's no way we have Star Wars fans in this chat. There's just, I can't believe that. You're saying that very deliberately. Yeah, you yes. on your face. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't believe that. Moose is much larger than mouse. Yes, very true. Michael Crabtree. But they could be friends, I feel like. Yeah, they're both... Uh, the mice and the mice? Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, all right, so that is a little bit about um, your uh, previous work. Maybe we can jump into what you did yesterday yeah. um, and then show oh. off what, you know, what we're going to be doing. It's on there. It's on there. Oh, yeah. So I have, like, um, maybe our character mm -hmm. here. You know, he's hanging out. Um, maybe, maybe he's smoking a cigarette. I don't, mm -hmm. That's not an endorsement if you're, you know... Um, <laughs> thinking about picking up the habit. But if, if you're an immortal demon, you can do whatever you want, yeah. I think. But, the lungs uh, are safe. Right, right. And uh, I'm gonna tighten up these palm trees in the back. I kinda put some some placeholder ones. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna tighten those up. And I have a stone monument um, that we're gonna play with that is um, protruding from the desert sands. So, nice, nice. and I've got all my lighting planned. I, I'm not the tightest penciler, mm -hmm. so um, I like happy accidents when I'm finishing a drawing. Um, but I've kind of blocked in a lot of my values and some of those things. Nice, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I'm really the tightest penciler either. I, I typically, like I get to about this point mm -hmm. and then that's when I begin to paint. Um, I really have a lot of respect for people who can like do the line art and and like kind of like ink it till it's like 100% perfect. Mm -hmm. And there's like, almost like they have like a, a better understanding of the, uh, how would you say it? Like the functionality side of art than mm -hmm. I do because sometimes I, I hide things with paint. I do like something that's a little more impressionistic than yeah. like a very specific, like this is how the hinge works and this is how, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I find that when I do try to go into all of the specifics of an item or um, an outfit or whatever, I get a little bit lost. It's not my style. <laughs> yeah, to me it's about directing the eye. Mm -hmm. So like I'll tighten up areas that I want the viewer to focus on. Mm -hmm. And the other ones I'll maybe uh, leave a little more abstract. Kind of like wispy and yeah, yeah. doing its thing. Yeah, nice, or nice. Um, you know, there's a term in comic books called black spotting. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you, you can see it here, like I just kind of have a pool of black because I wanted to cast shadow there. So you just, just went for it, just put it there and... Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, James Gurney, who we brought up yesterday, he, mm -hmm. he coined the term shape welding. And so when I get all these blacks um, on his feet, mm -hmm. on the bottom of his coat here, all these shapes are going to kind of merge into one shape with the path of that black that's right yeah of, nice and nice. If, if if i do it clearly it'll still read mm -hmm. but everything will be nice and glued together frazetta did that all the time oh yeah oh yeah so you know there's a little there's a little trick to make things look more solid mm -hmm. have okay. a little more weight to them and you can see like i do it a lot with this stuff you know yeah i've noticed like especially here like on his horns he has yeah, let me kinda... see if i can uh, uh i wish i had my little there we go 
Um, but on his horns, you kind of have like that dark under that blends down into his, his yeah, brow, like that kind to of his stuff. eye, or you know, from his eye to his cheek to his chin down to his beard and all that. That's, that's nice. That's really cool. Um, or if you have a character in an environment, you can mm -hmm. do the same thing. Yeah. This is, I just, I actually really, really, so is this um, paint or is this like all marker and That's ink? ink. Yeah, That's pretty, really cool. Pretty much 99% of what I do is ink. And there, really ink. you can soften the edge with like a black colored pencil if you like. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably a lot of thumbprints there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I just throw everything um, at the... Uh, with the canvas yeah. and just kind of let it do its thing. Awesome. Yeah, you know, especially in the sketchbook, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Um, all right, so maybe we can kind of just jump Get into, into it. Yeah. yeah, jump into what we're doing today. Um, and I will uh, read our chat. Everyone's talking about the right hand of doom. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. Um, that's his handy. Um, his handy dandy hand. Yeah, that's his handy dandy hand. And um, it's a great design. You know, there's a lot oh, of yeah. circles on the design. And um, I might have to pair my pencil again. It's looking like. Sometimes it's, that happens. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it, world. But. You can just unplug it and pair it. Yeah, let me do this real quick and we can continue to talk about yeah. Hands of Doom. Yes. And. Uh, the Hands of Doom that are that is in no way, uh, absolutely 100% not any kind of influence for a particular gauntlet of power. Um, from <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> from some other super powerful uh, characters in fictional comic books. Right. right. Not that other gauntlet. Right. Not right. Different. At all. Different thing. Different thing. Totally different. Different functionality. giant hand of power. <laughs> so um, now I've got this beautiful um, pocket brush mm -hmm. and uh, brush pen. It's probably patterned after a pocket brush, but it's kind of this grungy line. Oh, which I really, nice. I really like. That resembles what a real pocket brush does in, in analog media. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty comfortable working with it. And when you're doing something um, kind of stony, like a, an abandoned monument, um, that's exactly what you want. You know, you mm -hmm. want kind of a grungy line. So I like um, the how dramatic the pressure sensitivity is on it too. Yeah, you can you can hit the gas and uh, really. Yeah. You know, just like a real brush. And it's nice too because it, it looks like it's pretty sharp because some of the pressure sensitivity brushes that I use, mm -hmm. if I'm not pressing as hard, uh, like it also gets fainter. Yeah. But this is just very like kind of on the money there. Just like boom, here's the here's the ink. Like it's dark, it's black, it's contrasty. It's like, you know, very yeah. nice. And I have a pretty light touch. I'm like a little baby mouse drawing on an eggshell, you little know. Little baby so. Yoda yeah. cradling a bowl of soup. Yes. That's exactly <laughs> what I, that's my goal, you know. Yeah. So. Everybody's goal should be to paint as gently as baby Yoda cradling his soup and sipping it like he just don't care. Uh, <laughs> it's better for your hand after oh, long yes. hours of drawing and um, you know, I do have friends that will dig into things and make indentions and. Me. That's oh, me. are you one of the? Oh, are you yeah. one of them? Okay. I draw so hard, and it's like not, it's not conducive to like keeping my electronics super nice, and it's it also hurts my hand. But it's just how I draw. Um, I find that I do have to force myself sometimes. Um, uh, if I'm doing that a lot, and I'm working on something in fresco. Mm -hmm. Um, which, by the way, I have a, I believe I have a fresco surprise for you. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I may or may not have fresco surprise. Okay. Um, but I, um, if I'm using fresco uh, and I notice that I'm drawing like much too hard, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll get up and I will pace and I will draw with like the side of my pencil kind of like a charcoal and not press so hard and mm. walk around because if I'm walking, I, I can't like push down on it. So I like draw in a way in a, in a setting where I can't push because sometimes I'm not even thinking about it. I just default to pushing way too hard on my screen. Ah. Um, but uh, I have, uh, I think that if you, something that I did not mention yesterday mm -hmm. because I wasn't sure, but I double checked on my own iPod um, after I left the studio yesterday. And I think if you hold down that button. Which button? The, this, this selection, hold it down. Yeah. There's your ellipse. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, thank you for whoever. Well, can you? So does it, does it, okay. 
So let's so see. We can add ellipse. to it. I believe there is. But it a, doesn't. Does it stick? Um, I like, as in. Like, can can the brush stick to this um, selection? Because because it, it makes an ellipse, but can it like? Oh, like can you make a kind of like in Photoshop where you use like the shape tool and you can yeah, put a like stroke a path. on it? Right. Oh, see, I don't know about that. Because you could you could make but an you ellipse could do this that way if you need to. And and I have a pretty steady hand, so I could trace one pretty. Mm -hmm. well, That's pretty good. Yeah, you know, if if I used in a different pinch. if I used a flat a tool that didn't have a um, a. Uh, Variation in the line width, mm -hmm. you could probably, but uh, yeah, that's that's good to know. Uh, it's 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 tucked away in here. Yeah, some of them, any any of the uh, tools in, I mean, in all of the the, the apps like in uh, Photoshop for iPad, in Fresco, mm -hmm. in uh, Photoshop Desktop, um, any of those. Uh, if you you know Illustrator, if you see that little teeny little blip, that little. Uh, triangle in the corner of your brush. Mm -hmm. That means that if you if you hold and click down, it'll open up a panel of similar tools that belong in the folder with it, um, and you can switch to different things. Um, let me see. I think I missed a comment here that I would like to read. Uh, there are actually brushes in Photoshop that simulate how a real pencil would work. You actually have to sharpen them in Photoshop. There is a button for that. Are you kidding? I've never heard that before, but if that is true, that is like taking my immersive photoshopping to like another level. I, I think there's um, immersive I, Photoshop gaming. <sighs> I think this person might be pulling your leg. I think he is, considering he's the person that pulls my leg the most, oh, aside from Jan okay. Eric. All right. Tim Mobiste <laughs> is uh, is his name, and he likes to tease me. Um, with the iPad and Apple Pencil, would be great if it came with drawing sound effects depending on the type of brush or tip used. Oh, that would be great. That would be super That's great. immersive, you know. You know, you can get those uh, screen things that have texture on them. Yeah, which I have. I have a... Um, Do you I, really? Yeah, I have a um, textured... Uh, uh, film that I put mm -hmm. over there, and they make one that's even rougher than what I have, which mm -hmm. I would prefer. But can I, can yeah, I yeah, it? you can move the, you can feel the, uh, you know. Oh, okay. So, you know, what I was wondering is like, when you put that texture mm -hmm. on there, wouldn't it be like having a noise filter over your whole screen? Like, does it, it, it does. You a little can, bit blurry. It does. You, um, the, I wish there were a way to have both, uh -huh. but drawing on glass is um, miserable to me. You know. Yeah. So I, I um, as soon as I got an iPad, which I do love, mm -hmm. um, I got a, and it's almost impossibly difficult to apply this film without bubbles. Really? Yeah, yeah, you have to really get it right. But get um, like one of those squeegees. Mm -hmm. and just. But if you're drawing on a a, 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 a surface that provides friction, mm -hmm. um, the smoothness of your lines uh, will increase because really? you have something to grip as you as you make a mark. Um, yeah, and that's just something I learned from drawing on traditional paper, you know. Okay. Which yeah. digital tools, they have a, a smoothing tool for each brush that'll like, mm -hmm. but I don't use it. I don't use a smoothing tool either. I don't use it. I, I, I would if I needed to, if I needed to draw like a really buttery curve, you know, like on a, the hood of a sports car or something. But um, there ain't gonna be none of those out here in the desert, so hmm. everything's gonna be grungy and rough. <laughs> Some people asking if shapes are coming to Fresco. I do not know for sure what is or is not coming to Fresco. Uh, I think I need to replace my paper like it's been worn down, Jimmy Mitchell uh, says. Yeah, that's exactly the thing I have, and you can wear it down, but I probably never will because, again, I, I draw with a light touch, but mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're really, you know, going to town, then yeah, you can scrape the texture off, I think. The uh, gentle baby Yoda hands. Yeah, or this person maybe is a gentle baby Yoda themselves, and they just draw so much that they've worn it out. Yeah. And if that is the case, congratulations, you're well on your way to being a samurai master. <laughs> you know, <laughs> for sure. So happy about that because I used Adobe Draw in the App Store for some shapes uh, on the go, but it's being discontinued because of the Illustrator app coming out. Oh yeah, there are changing up apps, mobile apps a little bit. Um, honestly, I, I highly recommend uh, using Fresco or um, 
Photoshop for the iPad or any of these new ones because I, I actually used um, Adobe Sketch and Adobe Draw for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and now that I have had Photoshop for the iPad and Fresco to compare it mm -hmm. to, um, and of course it, it also depends on like what you what you need the program That's for. That's right, but, yeah. yeah. But for what I was using it for, going from these um, newer products to, uh, from what I was using before, mm -hmm. um, I find myself uh, feeling like worlds and worlds more comfortable using the tools. Like when I'm sitting there using it, I don't really feel like I'm constrained or like I'm using a, a mobile product that doesn't have everything that I want. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of just sitting there and I'm able to like really use that as like a major part of my workflow, which before I was using Sketch and Draw and it, it did the trick if I was in the in a pinch, but if I could, I would always go back to my desktop to, you know, reiterate on mm. certain things. Uh, but with Fresco and, um, and uh, Photoshop for iPad, I don't have to do that if I don't want to, do you, which is nice. Do you like drawing in Photoshop? Oh yes. On an iPad? Oh yes. Because the brushes are similar, right? Um, yeah, and I I do like it because it has more of like the graphic design um, uh, capabilities. It's more on that that end of things. So sometimes what I do is I actually go back and forth um, between the two because mm -hmm. I like being able to have custom brushes in one, you know, and I like being able to add text and stuff if I want and mm. uh, uh, use certain. Um, uh, adjustment layers and things like that if I want. And then sometimes I like to be able to uh, flip my canvas around and whatnot. So it really depends. Like I will do uh, my main sketch and stuff in Fresco and mm -hmm. sometimes I just stay in Fresco. Yeah. <clears throat> but sometimes depending on what exactly I'm doing, I'll just toss it in Photoshop and go back and forth. And that's just kind of how it's been. But the bottom line is if I don't want to leave my iPad, I don't have to leave my iPad. Yeah, which is which great. Which is amazing because how many, you know, how many uh, applications have we all tried to see if that could be the case at mm -hmm. some point, you know? Yeah, I, I just, um, I have pretty simple needs, so all I want is an electronic piece of paper, essentially, which is kind of what Fresco is to me, so, you know, yep. it's pretty much like drawing. I like being able to uh, export a time lapse. Oh yeah, we did that stuff. yesterday, yeah. right? Yeah, so maybe at the end of the stream today we can do a time lapse and kind of like show all of the progress that you've had on the piece total because it doesn't just like record from the session, yeah. it will record from the origin of the file. Oh cool. Which is really cool, yeah. So it'll have you'll have today's and yesterday's. Um, could you say which brush this is that you're using? Yeah, I'm using, so I used to I have my favorites. Um, this is the Belgian Comics nib, so it's it's um, kind of a little tighter, and I'm using it for areas that I need some precision. And I think of that is, I think of that in terms of like, his, his sleeve here is a soft surface. So I don't really care if I have a lot of hard, crisp lines, I want them to be kind of um, you know, I like these kind of, uh, Softer, yeah, yeah, it, it works fine for that. Um, but for face, hands, things, I need a little more, um, tighter edge. Mm -hmm. I'll switch to this and all these are just stock brushes. I'm, I'm nice. nowhere near smart enough to, um, to tinker with them and, and, uh, you know, change any of the settings. But I know some of you all probably are great at that, you know? But yeah, just a Belgian Comics brush, the um, brush pen, and I love the Sumi brush if mm -hmm. you want to, which I will be using a little bit later. Um, but I like things, I don't like a lot of precision. I like things that have a little, um, I like things that have a little bit of uh, an unpredictability to them. Yeah. Just like, a, I, and I draw on paper a lot, so that comes from me using real brushes and real croquil pens. Um, it looks like Richard is asking, are they pretty much all the same? You mean um, Photoshop for iPad and Fresco? Oh no. They, I mean, you could probably do some of the same things mm -hmm. in each of them, but um, they're, they're very, very different, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, I think I was wondering that at first, but after actually getting into the programs and checking them out, um, they're, they are very different. Fresco is for drawing and painting. It is 
like kind of mastered for like if you are coming in to do illustration and drawing and and painting there's you know three different kinds of of brushes and stuff that you can use there's um, brushes that mimic watercolor there's brushes that um, you know you can use vector brushes so you have live brushes vector brushes and then I, mm -hmm. I just call them like brushes, like regular mm -hmm. brushes, mm -hmm. you know? You have all these different brush capabilities in Fresco. Um, you're able to um, import reference photos or import previous, you know, sketches or whatever and bring it in there. You can mess with all of your layers and everything. Um, similar to how Photoshop works, you can ask, um, you, or you can add uh, masks and and all kinds of awesome stuff and just like make a painting or make an illustration. Mm -hmm. um, but when you when it comes to Photoshop, I would say, yeah, you have brushes and everything in Photoshop for iPad and there's a few things that, you know, there's some things over there for that you could use for illustration mm -hmm. um, that I, the reason why I put my illustrations over there sometimes is because I'm used to using iPad for desktop and there are certain tools that I want to add to my workflow. But um, I have used iPad, uh, the iPad version of Photoshop to do purely graphic design projects uh, when I was traveling. Mm -hmm. um, I did uh, like a, a huge round of um, promo match cards for um, a wrestling tournament my friend was putting on. Oh, cool. um, and you couldn't do that in Fresco unless you wanted to illustrate everything. You got your text, you have like all these different um, adjustment layers and things that you can use in Photoshop. It's like a, like a mini compact Photoshop that I could do my other work in that uh, is un totally unrelated to illustration. Um, so it's it's definitely jam-packed with way more um, uh, on the graphic design um, side than Fresco is. So they're very different, but um, I, that doesn't mean that you can't figure out how to do similar things in each. Um, you do the time lapse as well. Yeah, Anthony, the, the time lapse um, feature in Fresco is fabulous. Um, also, we've got a couple minutes left before we do the chat and win. So those of you who might be over on YouTube, um, if you're wondering why I am chatting with people that you might not be seeing, it's because we are reading the Behance chat. Uh, so head over to behance.net slash live uh, and be active over here because we are going to be doing a giveaway soon. Uh, one lucky active chatter is going to win uh, 100 free custom uh, uh, three by three die cut stickers. Um, so you will get, if you get chosen, you will get to upload a custom artwork of your choice um, and get 100 free stickers of that design, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, the Photoshop uh, erodible brushes don't work with Fresco yet. I have shared a screenshot where you would find the sharpen tip button in the tips and tricks channel. Is that real? It almost sounds like a joke, but I'm intrigued. You've piqued my interest, Tim. I wonder if he's adding more detail to further lure you into the, uh, the joke. I don't know though, because I feel like if anyone in chat was gonna do that, they would mention something about Star Wars. Mm. But he's not—he's not like he's not like hitting all the you know the major like vowel points that would like lure me. Okay. You know. Okay. Against my better judgment, so I, it's possible that he's telling the truth. Um, I wish I was a supernatural being. I think you probably are. Yeah. You just I, don't know yeah. it. Yeah, know? I agree. I would agree with that completely. Yeah. Sight unseen. Definitely. Um, we've got about 30 seconds here. I love sticker mules so much. I do too. It's the only place I get stickers. When I do like um, comic conventions and anime conventions and stuff where I'm selling my artwork, I always, always go to Sticker Mule beforehand and get a new round of stickers from them. They're the only sticker creators I ever want to use. Uh, and we've got five, four, three, two, one second left. Um, we're gonna take a little bit of a break and play um, a pretty awesome little video for you. And when we come back, we are going to uh, choose a winner. Is there anything that you maybe would like to ask the chat that can kind of get them chatting and active in the, mm. in the chat? Maybe a, a question. Yeah, what's everybody's thing? What's everybody's goal? Like, are, do we have like uh, concept designers, graphic designers? Um, illustrators. What do you guys do out what, there? What do you What do you consider yourself like a comic book artist? I'm just a comic, comic book guy. Comic book you know, guy? Comic I consider book myself guy. like a like a digital painter. That's usually what I tell people. Okay. Um, but definitely post your answers in the chat, and we will be right back.
Welcome back, everybody. We are going to kind of chill and maybe chat with the chat um, until our uh, winner magically appears in the space between me and Mr. Green here. Um, I have a Behance obsession currently. Don't we all? Don't we all? Uh, Alberto says marketing and advertising. Uh, Jordan says this goal is to improve on his drawing skills. David Williams is a graphic designer, average everyday normal dude. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Kerwin says my goal is to unite people that like and dislike pineapple on pizza. Stop it, Kerwin. Just stop it. <laughs> mm. uh, Mario Diaz Bustamante is our winner. Congratulations, Mario. You have won 100 free custom uh, three by three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. Uh, if you did not win, fear not, we have a gift for everyone. If you go to stickermule.com slash Adobe uh, Live 20, not Adobe Live 19 any longer, Adobe Live 20 now, you can get 10 custom stickers for $1. Val, that copper eyeshadow is fire. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying out here, I'm trying. <laughs> Oh snap, oh my gosh. Yes, Mario, it, we announced that he won right when he was like, all right, I'm back. Oh, so he yeah. like got up for a while and then came back and he's like, I won. Yes, yes way, Mario. Congratulations, you are the winner. So keep an eye on your Behance messages because somebody from Adobe will reach out to you with instructions on how you can claim your prize. Um, and definitely please uh, send us some images for um, your stickers once you get them made because we want to see them. We want to see all of the <laughs> designs that you make. Yes, Jordan, the finger snap. Sorry. And we talk about uh, uh, makeup and hair and fashion. Oh. I gotta get a little bit sassy about it. Yes, Mario did it, indeed. Hello, Van Damme. So Van Damme and his sister, I believe are nine and 11 or 11 and oh, 13. Oh, cool. They're very, they're very young and they participate in the uh, Photoshop daily creative challenges all the time and like post all of their work and everything and they're like really good well, That's gonna get them a long way. Yeah, you know, it is starting yeah. early and uh, Imagine working being hard. that young watching Adobe live and participating with designers in the challenge mm. um, But Van Damme is in the chat today, so it's good to see you Van Damme. I'm glad you came to hang out with us again All right, I'm out, but both broadcasts have been great. Good day everyone. Thank you so much. Oh, thank Nicholas you. Day. Yeah, thank you. Good day to Nick Day. How can we import brushes in iPad Photoshop? Uh, I've done it before. I can't remember how exactly to do it. Maybe if we had Photoshop open at the moment, um, I could run you through it, but we don't. So maybe we could get a link in the chat to um, the, actually maybe I could pull up the iPad Photoshop for iPad uh, page. I usually go to the support page if I have any questions um, or I, I take to YouTube um, and check out the uh, latest tutorials that people have put together and so on and so forth. Yeah, here we go. We can get this going for you. I'll throw this into the chat. Boom. Go ahead and check that out. Um, so that has a little bit more information on um, uh, Photoshop for iPad. You may you may also find, um, I, I also noticed if you guys open um, the iPad um, Photoshop version, they usually have tutorials and things on that main page, right? Mm -hmm, or is mm -hmm. that just Fresco? I think it's I think it's both mm -hmm. actually. So right when you open it, they have um, a link to tons of different tutorials, which I think is a fabulous thing to do. Um, so kudos to the uh, team for making that a thing. I love that. Um, and you can also click a link there that will direct you to a place where you can find even more than what they're showing on that main page, which is which is great. Alrighty, I love that you're getting uh, 
all of that kind of like you know you have your lines and stuff but you're really starting to kind of use that brush to its full potential there mm. like in the sleeve where it's got some of the larger areas mm -hmm. and all that stuff going i'm getting really excited about that look um and i also really like i don't know I, I guess I was kind of imagining when you said that you were gonna put palm trees in, that mm -hmm. you were gonna be making the leaves like very uniform and like the classic like palm tree look. And I I gotta say, I quite like this better than what I originally oh, imagined. Cool. Yeah. They're, they're kind of like, they're kind of they're kind of weird, but mm. they're kind of like doing their own thing, but they're also like, like it goes with what you're illustrating today. Like I just love that. Very yeah, gritty palm trees. Oh yeah, yeah. They're gonna. <laughs> I, I'm gonna do some cuts in the shape later to mm -hmm. to. Um, but yeah, I tried not to get too precious with them because they wouldn't match the non-precious other things that I'm doing. You know. Oh, he's precious. Leave <laughs> him alone. <laughs> yeah, they're very precious tree. <laughs> <laughs> the the Hellboy is very precious. Okay, he's precious to me. <laughs> <laughs> Artem, hello, welcome. Uh, Carol Purcell says, those tutorials are a great starter track. Yes, they are. Um, I think it's fabulous because I know that a lot of people um, have come in uh, to Adobe Live and said, you know, you know, when we're using Fresco or like we are now, or when we're using Photoshop for the iPad, uh, they were like, oh, what is this? How do I get my hands on this, you know? And then a lot of people will download it mm -hmm. right there during that broadcast for the first time. And it's really nice because they will get to, you know, ask questions and inquire and everything. But uh, being super new to such a robust application like that, mm -hmm. it's really nice for a beginner to be able to be like, hmm, you know, maybe I do want to learn how to use the live brushes, or maybe I do want to learn how to um, uh, use the text tools in iPad Photoshop and just kind of click around and explore that way. Precious, he is majestic. He is majestic. He truly is. Uh, Photoshop, the yeah, Photoshop app is great for photo compositing, graphic design, and retouching. Yeah, uh, Tim, it, I I did um, had the wonderful pleasure of also hosting um, Mr. Aaron Nace from Flurn mm -hmm. when the last time that I was here, and he did the whole couple of days in Photoshop, um, iPad for uh, Photoshop for iPad. And um, he was doing uh, photo composites the whole time and messing with adjustment layers and doing all kinds of like masking and everything. So it's like really, um, you know, vastly different uh, from Fresco. And it's kind of nice having them both so that, you know, all kinds of like digital artists can really dig into the core of their personal medium, which is nice. Um, I also like that when you, when you do uh, press a little harder when it does get a little wider there. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's almost like the uh, the brush itself kind of gets like a little extra tail piece on the side, like more texture kind of comes out of that brush, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, and you know, you can play that um, to, you can do that deliberately depending on like the size of the brush, the size of the canvas. Mm -hmm. So if you want more of that, you could um, configure your picture to get more of that. Yeah, or yeah. if you want less of that, you want a tighter line, you could uh, do that too. So um, I think I'm working at 300 DPI. That's right always now. what I work at every yeah. single time. Um, that's, the, that's the minimum standard for print, mm -hmm. I believe. So. Um, if you ever are working on something you think you might want to print or reproduce in any way, I say work at 300 DPI. Honestly, maybe 600 these days, depending on what your machine can. Yeah, or if you're doing, maybe you're doing like a billboard or something wild, you right, know, right. and extravagant. Uh, but I, I think um, to, and then this is just personal preference for me. Even if I know I'm not going to print something, I'm still working at at 300 dpi mm -hmm. minimum like, yeah you might print it later yeah and i and honestly i worked i worked at 72 by accident one time and i was like what's wrong with my <laughs> with my file mm. and then i realized it was like the first time in four years that i hadn't been at 300 dpi and i was like what's going on um Poki Han is in the chat. Poki Han is a wonderful regular to the stream. It's good to see you. I watched some of your live streams, Poki Han. Um, they were wonderful. Uh, your art's really, really cool, um, but welcome in. Uh, could you speak more about the gray blocks of color that you are putting in? Yep, yeah, um, so. This is from Aaron. This is, this is something I do when I work digitally. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a layer that I've reduced the transparency. I'm gonna make it completely opaque 
but I like to keep it gray so that if I want to, I'm gonna do some cuts in here to highlight some of these textures and things. And it's just a little easier to see what I'm doing. So it won't be, uh, it won't be translucent gray um, when I'm done. It's gonna be a very stark black and white, um, black and white image. But I mostly just did it to uh, help myself think and visualize the, uh, the values of the picture. Yeah, that's actually what I do as well. I, I do a sketch layer um, and then I do uh, kind of like a, a grayscale underpainting and then I'm either, um, you know, I, I used to actually turn the opacity down similar to, you know, how you're saying, um, depending on whether I wanted the values to be like very dark or very light. Mm -hmm. um, but I recently stopped turning the opacity down to do that because sometimes I would go to like merge things together or whatever and there'd be a transparency mm -hmm. and I wouldn't want. So then I just started pulling up levels and just yep. turning the value down um, on, on levels. Um, and that seems to work. But yeah, I do that and then I'll come in and I'll add some texture and then I will, over the top of like the line art and my grayscale, I will start blocking in colors with blending modes and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, definitely at the beginning when playing around with things and working at 72 DPI when to know it's crazy. <laughs> How did you build your confidence as it relates to adding value to your pieces, especially using traditional media? Yeah. Um, trial and error. Um, I like a lot of artists that use a high contrast style. So I love, uh, I'll name some comic book people, Frank, well, Frank Frazetta, mm -hmm. um, John Paul Leon, uh, Mike Mignola. A lot of their work is based, a lot of traditional comic stuff is based in uh, film noir. So there's mm -hmm. just a lot of heavy black things. And, and um, you know, I'm not going for like, I didn't measure where the cast shadows are and, and, um, and really calculate it precisely, which I could, but that's not what I'm going for. It's mostly I'm just looking for shapes that are that are interesting to me, and they might have some kind of semblance of mm -hmm. realism. But yeah. um, just uh, maybe draw something and see how much black you can put in it, and until um, it it doesn't read anymore. And you can apply those um, if you want to get it into color. You can still apply those value um, relationships to a uh, work in color. Yeah. I hope that answered the question. I think I think it did. Um, Steven, where are you from? I'm working as I'm listening and I can hear a subtle southern accent. Oh, it's not subtle. I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from, uh, originally from Alabama. Uh, I lived in Savannah um, about nine years, so I'm definitely a southerner, but I live in Portland now, so, you know, I'm, uh, maybe my accent will decrease as I'm up there, I don't well, know. Well, maybe not, maybe it'll yeah, just maybe be it awesome. Yeah, maybe it won't, you know, maybe it won't. Uh, Frazetta, yes, Frazetta. Um, I believe, I'm gonna look something up real quick just to double check before I tell a story that might not be true, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's see. I heard that um, uh, Frazetta had an issue uh, where his hands would shake. That happens. And it and it, and it um, kind of transformed his art. Like it was a thing where he didn't think that he was going to. I believe it was Frazetta. Um, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Um, and he at, at at a point in his life in his um, art. Uh, journey, he had to kind of re-evaluate the way that he did art to mm -hmm. account for his hands shaking so much. I believe it. Because he, yeah, like it wouldn't stop, wouldn't stop, and it was like he just had like jagged lines, and you can kind of look at his art um, from before that issue and after that issue, and um, you know, still very, like very impressionistic, like it's still his work, but you can tell he has like, um, uh, definitely like looser sketchy lines mm -hmm. um, in the later work, but he kind of, I, I always uh, thought that was kind of cool like, and kind of motivating uh, to me where like if something goes wrong, something in your life drastically changes, if you really, really, really want to keep doing art, then you just find a new way to do it. Yeah, you must. Um, yeah, you know. yeah. I don't know, I don't know what I would do if I like, if I couldn't do art. Like if I couldn't paint, what would you do if you couldn't paint? 
I would you choose uh, something else to oh do. Oh gosh, I would uh, be a sushi chef. Really? Yeah, I, I would try. Yeah, I thought about that a lot the other day, and it seems like a fun job. Hmm. So. I think I'd probably be like the giraffes in Madagascar and go dig a hole and put my head in it. Oh yeah. <laughs> just yeah. just stand out there. <laughs> yeah, it's a fine way to <laughs> exist. Um, yeah, if you you know one. I have a, I don't have a steady hand, and um, I actually got a really bad um, case of tendonitis when I was a barista really? a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Oh wow. So I. That's not a joke. My drawing style is very sketchy, so mm -hmm. I don't have time for the line to shake. I just um, move very quickly. Just just put just stroke with confidence. There is a best stroke confidence. I think is is like something that's really important and something I've been talking to um, people about a lot lately and that is like, you can kind of see the difference between somebody that has like confident strokes and somebody that's, their stroke confidence is very, very low um, because you can see a lot of people do, you know, when they're not confident with their lines, they do like, you get like the hairy line. Yes, you never want just, that. You yeah. never, never want the hairy line. Um, and that would be, you know, when you're drawing something, and some of you may actually have hairy lines, if you think about it, in, in your own work. Um, if you're going to draw and you notice that, like, there's, like, f you know, five to 12 lines for one line, essentially, because you're just doing these teeny tiny little strokes all around to do your circle or to do your head or whatever. Um, and uh, to people who who do that, I say practicing line confidence and stroke confidence with mm -hmm. that brush mm -hmm. is so important um, because I used to do that same thing until one day I was just like, you know, I would be so happy if I could just put the line where I want it to be. If I could just put the line there, mm -hmm. just go for it, right? Um, and I realized one day that the only reason why I couldn't do it is because that's not what I was doing. Yeah. I just wasn't doing it. So then I was like, I'm just gonna put this line here and I didn't put it in the right place. And so I would like erase it or I'd, you know, control Z or whatever. Um, but I just practiced doing that. Okay, I want this shape. And I would just boop, boop, boop and draw like that whole shape and do that thing. And I might not get it right the first time, but after, you know, a couple of years of doing that where I just, you know, put it on the canvas, um, instead of like trying to be, like you said, super precious with it and mm -hmm. just like go around and get everything right. Um, I find that my compositions are better, uh, my shapes are much stronger, uh, I finish my work way, way faster, Absolutely. I don't have hairy lines, and I feel better about my work, too. Yeah. Yeah. I feel much better about my work. I like all that. I agree with all that. Um, I think the biggest difference between an amateur and a professional is the biggest tell mm -hmm. is the uh, line quality. Mm -hmm. You know, professionals just put stuff down. Yeah, and if you're if you're an artist that's learning, uh, my best advice would be to draw with a ballpoint pen a lot, mm -hmm. so you don't have the option to erase, and it to makes you calculate what you're gonna do. If you do that for a year or so, your hairy lines will disappear. Gotcha, gotcha. So, um, and and if you're if you only work digitally, then take your Z button on your keyboard and go hide it in a drawer somewhere so you can't use it. You know. <laughs> This is so interesting, and I'm glad I found this channel. It's helping me to learn more. That's from the Luxiant Trails. That's great. I'm, I'm glad. That's that's what we're doing it for, right? Yeah. A brother of my grandfather used to be a sculptor, and he would also uh, always say to learn to move your wrist and arm when doing lines. Agreed. Typically, when I make when I make lines and stuff, a lot of people they do this with their thing. I draw from my elbow. Mm. -hmm. You know, when I'm drawing I across my screen, I rest my elbow, and I usually I have to have like a like a like padding or something there so that my elbow can, you know, rest comfortably. Mm -hmm. And when I draw, I'm doing a big pivot motion like that. And sometimes, you know, I'll move it, and sometimes I do get in there. But typically, um, if I have to do something that's small, because people always ask me, well, what if you have to do a small detail? Then I wait until it's time for details, and then I zoom in, and then I'm still doing the same big strokes, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, and so it gives you something that's like much smoother, um, and I, I'm i confident with that. You know, like that's comfortable to me now to do that motion. Um, so I just, you know, I rotate my canvas so I can always be going like this. I zoom in so I can always be going like this. Um, and 
uh, kind of having my arm resting too allows me to have like a guide of sorts so that every time I make that motion, my stroke is like, boom, like I'm putting it where it needs to be. It's a confident line. Uh, shave them lines, people. Yeah, you know, I've actually seen some people <laughs> that have kind of a kind of a style like that. There's a really wonderful artist um, on Twitch TV by the name of Niku Senpai. Um, and he's a wonderful gentleman. I've had the pleasure of meeting him a few times um, in person. Um, and he is a spectacular artist. Um, and he kind of does a thing where he like blocks things out um, like in a, mi a mixture of lines and like large shapes, large form. Mm -hmm. um, and then he will go in and he will shave the forms down into the lines that he wants, which is really interesting. It's almost like the same concept as, um, you know, when you get like those eggs or those um, boards that have like rainbow color on it and then there's black wax on top and you mm -hmm. shave it. Mm -hmm. It's like that, but like in reverse because mm -hmm. he's essentially like, you know, creating the lines out of, out of a, you know, massive form, which is really cool. And he, like, he knows what he's doing. So it's, it's, it's not like he's got hairy lines and then he's trying to smooth them out. Like he really, knows what he's doing when it comes to form and, and making things. But a lot of people would look at his sketches once he's done with the sketch and think he did line art, but he kind of didn't mm. in a way, mm. which, is, which is cool. It's a yeah. very uh, interesting style. And every rule can be um, broken. Mm -hmm. uh, are you familiar with Bob Peak? Probably, and Let's I just don't the, know the name. Let me let me Google Bob Peake. He's like we'll the see. illustrator from the 60s, and his work, his line work was deliberately rough um and it's hugely influential he did a lot of movie posters as well but p a a okay yeah Let me pull so like there's a there's a my fair lady poster that's oh yeah oh like yeah pink but like absolutely this you, one here yeah, yeah um the the lines uh, on that or maybe there's another one that you could see like maybe grab that one this one here yeah, the lines are rough, mm -hmm. but they're Definitely. deliberate. It's a design element. So. Yeah, it's very, they're very specifically there. Um, you can tell that this is his style. And that, that, that kind of goes back to something that I feel like I can't, I can't stress enough mm -hmm. to people just because of the sheer amount of people who are out there doing this. And that is that when they, when their technique is flawed, they blame it on, they, they say it's their style. And um, for some of you, you may have um, a particular element of your technique that some people don't favor that is truly your style. But I think that in a lot of cases, I find that some folks maybe could use a better understanding of some of the fundamentals. Um, and by saying that it is like I meant to do that, um, I think that sometimes people may uh, hinder themselves from growing more as an artist. And mm -hmm. so to figure out if you're doing that or not, like, cause I've had to do that myself too, is I'm really honest with myself in my head about why I do or do not want to approach a certain aspect of a painting. Um, it used to be that I said, um, uh, no, I don't, you know, I don't want to paint male characters. Like I, yeah, I just not prefer, my style. Yeah, it's not my style. I like to, I prefer to paint like feminine faces and female characters and all that kind of stuff. And then I asked myself one day, I said, well, why don't I actually paint any male characters? And then I realized I don't really know how, I don't huh. know how to do that. Yeah. I don't know how to make a face mac masculine. And I didn't know how to take my knowledge of the, f the feminine form and translate it into um, like a masculine body type. Like I didn't know how to do that. And when I realized that I had been saying that, you know, and then by saying that kind of barring myself from learning that thing, then I was like, all right, we're painting nothing but dudes for the next six months. Like that's what's gonna happen. Um, and now I can do that. Yeah. Um, but it's the same thing as right now, I'm on the hunt for, uh, uh, for the knowledge of environment paintings. And oh, I tell yeah. people all the time, I said, oh, you know, yeah, um, I it's paint not, portraits. Yeah. portraits is my, that's my thing. That's my signature. That's what I do. And then I realized, you know, it is what I do. It is my signature, but I think I really want to paint environments. I think I really want to be able to express that. I want to show a scene. I want to show a place. I don't want to only show faces and, and, you know, and pictures of people. And then I sat down like a week ago and I was like, here we go. <laughs> Same thing, you know? Uh, last time it was painting males and now it's painting 
environment and I'm just gonna have to learn how to do this because I've been hiding. Um, so don't hide. Be honest yeah. with yourself and then take the steps to like, okay, how am I going to change that? You know? mm. um, if it is your style, then it's your style. But I guarantee you, even if, even if something is your style, taking the time to get a better understanding of anything pertaining to art will improve it. Yeah. So even for that, do and, it. And here's a great question that um, I would add to that comment. Like mm -hmm. if, 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 if someone says, oh, this is my style, mm -hmm. um, are you fooling people? You know, if they believe you and they love your work, then you're right. But if, mm -hmm. if they're like, come on. They're then, not fooling me. Well, yeah, it's, you yeah, know, yeah. Like, I'll be like, uh, cause I'll, I'll, I'll offer advice to people who are looking for advice. You, cause I don't, I, because I know how it can feel to not ask for advice and then get unsolicited criticism. I typically don't do that to anyone yeah, unless nobody it's a wants close that. friend of mm -hmm. mine. You know, if it's a close friend of mine, I'd be like, hey man, you gotta fix that hand. You cannot post that with that hand, <laughs> you know? Um, but if it's not somebody that I'm very close with, then I'll be quiet. But if somebody asks for advice and I feel like I, like I look at the work and I'm like, okay, I have something to say mm -hmm. about this, I will say, hey, you know, this is what I feel. And if somebody says, um, oh, it's my style, uh, and I, every time it's baloney, I mm -hmm. know it's baloney right off the bat. Yeah. I can tell when it's baloney. Yeah. Um, and depending on the mood and depending on the person, sometimes I even tell them it's baloney. Yeah. Um, and they might not like to hear that, but uh, somebody telling me I was baloney is what took me to finally like really do that thing. Like I said, like be honest with myself and mm -hmm. like really think about what I can and can't draw and think about my capabilities. My parents told me, they were like, you know what, you, you're good at art, but you gotta stop doing this, this, and this in your work. Like it's it's holding you back. And I was like, no, mom, dad. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And then I finally was like, ah, oh, my parents were right. I'm sick of this. <laughs> so I did it, but yeah, don't, don't, don't eat bologna when you should be eating beef. Does that work? I just made that up. I, mean, I don't think, I don't, I don't think that, <laughs> I tried. I tried really hard uh, for that one. <sighs> but you get, you get the gist of that. What, what I'm what I'm saying, you know, don't don't feed into the lie when you could be getting better at your at your art. Um, early in my quest for skills, my calligraphy coach said to draw from my shoulder. Yes. Um, use your whole arm to create the shapes. It really increases the strength of even a quick sketch. So drawing from the shoulder is that different from my little rotating thing? Like how would you draw from your shoulder? On an easel. Just, oh, a like lot of here, uh, here. a lot of traditionally trained artists will hold the overhand grip, which oh, is way better for you. You, gotcha. know, you hold a pencil like this, you draw from the shoulder, oh. and that's uh, ideal. Gotcha. But it's hard to do that when you're on an iPad. Mm -hmm. But um, I would recommend it. Okay. I'd recommend it. Interesting. Giving out advice is sometimes hard to do. Yes, mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes people give out advice when they don't actually have something to say to you, but they feel like they should. Sometimes yeah. I've noticed that that happens a lot too. Yeah. Where somebody's like, I need help on this. And then people, instead of like looking at it and thinking, oh, I have something to say about this particular part of your painting. They they say, okay, this person wants me to say something. So I will look at this until I have something to say about it mm -hmm. or f try to find something wrong so that I can give you constructive criticism. I, I try my best not to say anything about a piece unless I'm very, very certain what I would like to contribute to the, you know, to the dialogue of what can I improve? Um, because I've had people give me uh, criticism, like constructive criticism before, um, and I thought that they hated my work, but the truth was they liked it pretty well, but they just were looking for something to say because I asked them to say something about it. Um, and so I try not to do that. <laughs> yeah, just uh, make friends with people that you want to draw like yeah. and, and then value their opinions. Mm -hmm. You know, be careful who you listen to. Um, and that takes experience. It just comes with, with experience to, to, to kind of develop whose opinion you think is. Um, but I think it's important to seek out a teacher. I'm not a fan of art school, but mm. if you can go find a teacher. Or a um, mentor. A mentor, you know, just a mentor. Yep. Uh, I think too that kind of, um, kind of plays into like a lot of the themes that we were um, talking about yesterday mm -hmm. too. Um, uh, where I said, or we kind of discussed like learning how to pick out the truths in the sea of 
criticisms that you get, you know? Um, because that looks really great, by the way. You just put those lines on the face and instantly I'm seeing like heavy stone. Yes, it's dope. cheating. Yeah, That was so good. A little contour lines, mm -hmm. you know. Um. I'm liking that. Um, but yeah, you know, you if you you're getting a lot of a lot of feedback, sometimes you have to, and it, it can be hard, especially if you're at the beginning of like your art journey. Yep. It can be hard to kind of parse through criticisms, especially if they're coming from artists that you admire. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that at the beginning of a person's journey into like becoming a painter and illustrator, it's easy to admire everyone around you because everyone is far more advanced than you are. Yes. Um, and as you develop your skill, you start to admire like more of a core group of people that have been with you throughout the way, mm -hmm. you know, core group of artists that you've admired for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and then you kind of start narrowing down the focus of your criticism that you accept. But at the very beginning, it can be super daunting because everybody's opinion is important to you because everybody does a better job than you do probably. Um, and you want to hear from people that are better than you so you can improve. But you do have to kind of take all of the criticisms that you get and maybe piece through them until you start to see similar patterns and then listen to the patterns. That's typically what, what I try That's to do. That's really get. smart. That's a great way to look at it. It's otherwise like you kind of go crazy because you get so many different opinions, right? From yeah. so many different people. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm glad you like that. That's, yeah, that's, that's a, what I try to that's do. It's good advice. Um, a lady from an AIGA board told me to go back to school. Sometimes, um, cause I, I'm, I'm, I think that some people need school. I don't think that it's necessary to get an art job these days. I think your portfolio speaks for itself. And if you can do it without art school, that is a 100% viable way to learn. If you can self teach, you can do that. And you can be a professional artist and support yourself if you don't go to college. But I, I've met some people where they need that structure. They have to have the structure because they can't sit and do and just do the, like learn the art. Like mm. they, they feel like they need it because their their minds won't wrap around the concepts unless somebody is instructing them, um, which is fine. Some people are that way. Some people are like that. Um, uh, I have noticed too that a lot of the people who are like that, they don't end up being like freelance, freelance artists unless they have like an agent or a manager managing them. They usually go and like work for a company and become, you know, part of a team that works together. They're, you know, they're, cause some, some, you know, people's workflows are structured that way where they need um, uh, a figure that's like, you know, keeping everything in order and then working socially in an environment with like-minded people. That's how some folks thrive. Um, I'm more of a, you know, a recluse, like, you know, kind of in, you know, closet, like uh, in the darkness to painting my mm -hmm. stuff all by myself. I could do that. Um, but some people do need to um, have like kind of a structure, but you could probably find, you know, if, if art school isn't an option for you, it wasn't an option for me. I not for me. It. Yeah, me neither. That's could why I didn't not, go, you know? know. Could never could afford it. Um, uh, sometimes you can create that atmosphere for yourself. Um, and what I mean by that is um, start a club. Meet at a coffee shop with a bunch of other arts artists. Find an artist that is accomplished who would be willing to mentor a small group of, of people or willing to mentor you and then pass on that knowledge. You know, you can create kind of a school atmosphere for yourself if you if you really truly need that, you know, that structure. Um, and I wouldn't be, I think a lot of people are very opinionated these days about like, nah, art school, you don't need it, it's dumb. Or all of you need to go and get a degree or what, you know, there's people who are on like opposite sides of the spectrum. I say, don't don't be ashamed of whatever you choose and whatever's right for you. And just make sure you're being honest with yourself about what you need to succeed and go do that. And just be, you know, just, just do what you gotta do. Um, but I know that some people can kind of feel discouraged if somebody says like, oh, you know, you have to go to art school and they're just like, well. Well, I would, I would really wonder who are the people that are saying that. Maybe people you know? who ended up becoming very successful because they went to school. Cause I know some or, people go and they've developed so many connections, you know. Or maybe art schools are telling you that. That's possible too. Um, it's possible too. But I have a lot of friends that have accrued a lot of debt from mm -hmm. going to art school and mm -hmm. it does happen. they may have not acquired the skills that they need to be a professional. Yep. So, I mean, I'm not a hundred percent against them. I just, 
would really weigh a lot of those things out because I think I think people that need to be an artist is incredibly difficult mm -hmm. professionally. Oh yeah. Um, and There's I think if you don't strength. have a certain amount of grit and organization, uh, I, it's going to be really hard to do it. Unless you're like a luminary, like James mm -hmm. Jean, where people will just kick down your door and beg you to draw things. Mm -hmm. If you're not one of those people, you're going to need a lot of grit. And, um, you know, may, school is great if you can afford it, I would say that. Mm -hmm. But it's... Um, it's not necessary, I don't think. Yeah, and not there's if you online be a schools. Heart surgeon, yes, please go to school. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. Like, please go to school for that. But you know, for, what is the, for this, what does the chat room think about school? Have Have any of you guys went? Um, guys or girls, people? You plants, share, oh, Carol says a good idea to create like kind of an atmosphere is is a sharing studio. Yes, somebody. I agree. That's yeah. why I moved to Portland. Um, That's where all the comic book artists are. So. Jack Watson says I think art school is moot. Honestly, the only school you need to be a successful artist is perseverance. Talent isn't really relevant. That's an interesting um, comment there because a lot of people say like, oh, I'm not talented. I'm not talented. I think that you, if you want to draw, I think that you can you can exercise those art muscles just like you get buff at the gym. 100% agree. You, yeah, if you practice, it, you might not come by it as easily as other people. Mm -hmm. You might not take to it so well that it's very obvious that you're, you know, chipping away and getting better. Um, your art style might not be anything like anybody else's, and people might not favor it sometimes, especially at the beginning. But if you really want to draw, I believe if you have the inkling to draw, then the passion is there. It's in you, and you sure are probably meant to draw in some capacity because there's people that go their whole lives without like ever wanting to draw something. Mm -hmm. you know, I agree with everything like you just said. It's like cooking or taking care of animals or fixing cars or whatever. Yeah. But if like you want to draw, um, then you want to draw. It doesn't matter if you're good at it or not. You've already had the inkling. I want to draw something. I want to make, you know, drawings. So just, you know, do it and put the time into it. If you're very serious about it, if you want to make it a career, you have to put the time into it and it's work just like anything else. But um, I think that, like, maybe it's kind of a good idea to talk about, like, some of the realistic aspects of, like, being an artist because it's, it, it's, it is a job. It's, yeah. um, and it can be really hard. And honestly, most days I find myself working way more than a regular nine to five. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not just like wake up in the morning and like grab some coffee and go sit in my office and draw pictures perfectly. And they're all pictures that I really wanted to draw today. Mm -hmm. And I get it done at four uh, or 5 p.m. And then I have the rest of the day to go on an adventure. That's not what it's like. No, it's not know? what it's like. Um the Amen. job takes you too long, then you're working for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. And it's okay to not be a professional. It's okay yeah. to draw and love yeah. what you do and not do it full-time, yep. you know? Yep. There's a lot of great artists that do that. Uh, let's see. Fine art classes were way more intensive than the design uh, courses. Also, I was uh, also... Also, I was in college at a time when things were shifting to web and digital. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, only thing about AI for their bachelors of graphic design is you have to create about 22 portfolio pieces in order to graduate, and you can get a medal. That's pretty cool. You can get a medal for your art. Well, school does make you work, mm -hmm. which is a good thing, you know, um, because you can't do that volume of work and not learn something. Mm -hmm. Paco brings up an excellent point, and that is, I think it's a double-edged sword. My four-year university opened up doors for my career, but I practically became self-taught in my current line of work. And yeah, and that's, that's you know, kind of a, a, a great point to throw out there because, kind of like I mentioned earlier, like a lot of people develop, like, serious connections and stuff, and it's because they went to art school and drew the right thing with the right people that they actually kickstart their careers and things. Um, I think it really just comes down to what's what's right for you yeah. and making sure you're not, because I know people who have, who went to art school um, and they did accrue a lot of debt, but they didn't really want to go in the first place. They just felt that they had to, yeah. which is very unfortunate. Yeah. Um, and I think that it just kind of all comes back to like being very honest with yourself. I think being, being a freelance artist mm -hmm. means being very honest and straightforward with oneself. I think um, because you have to you have to stay realistic 
yeah. about so many things. You have to stay honest with what, how much work you're able to take on, what you're capable of doing, um, and and the the path to get there. I find myself battling with those things more than anything else, more than the artwork. It feels like. Yeah. You know. Here's a comment on connections. Um, go to events, mm. comic conventions, mm -hmm. uh, illustration conventions, um, because. It's not like Hollywood. Like you can't just go talk to Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. But in art, you really can go to a convention and walk right up to like the people that hire. Yep. And all you need is like one drawing to get their attention. You just be like, hey, check this out. Yeah, and like, yeah. oh, that's dope. It's very much like that. And yeah. they, they, no one's even asked me if I can tie my shoes. Like they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> they just, they just yeah. want to know, can you draw or not? Can you make this thing? And can you do it in a timely manner? And can you take? I think, I think, can like your your art skill and quality, mm -hmm. um, your. Uh, uh, getting it done in a timely fashion, like your turnaround time, yeah. and also um, your team working skills. And within team working skills, I would say that means can you take constructive criticism and feedback yeah. and make changes on the fly, and do you play well with others? Those three things are essential for um, being a freelance artist. Yeah, agreed, um, agreed. And if you, if you can't do those things, then you should learn a few lessons before you dive in because those are gonna be the main things that you find are the most important when you're working with other people. Sometimes you, it's less so when you're you know, freelance on your own, you're doing solo projects, mm -hmm. um, but it still comes into play and it's very important. Um, also, we have less than 20 minutes until the challenge uh, feedback deadline and then, um, Stephen and I are actually going to pull up the challenge entries for today's challenge and give you some feedback on what everybody did. Uh, let's see, when I was in art school, the trend at the time um, was bad art, ghastly period, but also uh, a bit liberating as people began exploring outside traditional. Sure. Interesting. Yeah, I, Very interesting. I think that's a good point to make. Oh, what did I do? Um, Yeah, that's a good point to make for sure. Uh, I will say the connections and networking I made along with the self-start attitude is what paid the most dividends, says Paco, yes. <laughs> um, I, I found too I agree. that, yeah. you know, the, the I think, you know, for me, self-teaching worked um, a lot, a lot better and, um, Finding myself in situations where I did like royally just totally muck something up mm -hmm. because I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't reliable enough or I wasn't um, uh, timely enough or whatever. Those taught me the lessons that I'm on my own now and I got to figure this out and I got to do it right. Otherwise, this, this and this, you know, yeah. it definitely taught me lessons. Um, and so that kind of like, I, I think though I've always learned better from like uh, being thrown into the proverbial deep end. And just like swim, swim, Val, swim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that can that can make or break you, right? You know. Yep. Which some people that's not gonna work, you know, and that's okay. And it's totally fine. And I will say, regardless of whether you go to school or not, connections are important. Mm -hmm, very. Other artists, other art directors. Um, so yeah, making those is is essential. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, they're essential. So. Go out there and, and meet people and post stuff on Behance, post mm -hmm. stuff on Instagram. Editors and people that hire, look at those things. You know what um, I noticed a, a, a few people doing that I thought was really smart just to like get their work out there and get their work seen is um, I have a friend who at the beginning of the year, uh, he goes and he writes down, um, or at, even at the beginning of each month, mm -hmm. you know, um, he goes and he writes down all of the movies that have been announced for the coming year or for the coming month or for mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and he, he like writes a, a uh, like the title out and in a document he puts the link to the trailer as they come out. Mm -hmm. And then he um, does a piece of art, uh, a piece of fan art of something from that trailer Super for smart. each of those things and then waits for the theater date and once that theater date comes on that's when everybody's googling it and looking up more information yeah. the morning that it drops in, into theaters boom there's that painting that's calculated like whoa that's mind blown that's like so smart um, and he says he says yeah it gets a lot of you know a lot of traffic to my 
my my channel and, and it gets a lot of, of you know I get a lot of feedback on my work I get like high engagement on my posts and stuff because mm -hmm. it's very strategic very smart and um, I think a lot of people for whatever reason they think that that's like selling out in some way and I'm I I, I think that it's it's conducting good business depends you know on what, what your mean? goal is yeah. you know because you know um, it, it's both mm -hmm. uh, but I, yeah, if you want to, it's a great move if you want to get work and you want to expose your work to other people. Mm -hmm. And I think that some, like you have, you might have like different things that you want to do and maybe other people don't really want to do that. And so it's kind of, it can be discouraging to other people maybe to see you like kind of soaking up the likes and favorites and retweets when you're you know, yeah. doing fan art real quick. But I don't know. I, don't, I just never really, none of that stuff ever bothered me to see other artists doing that. Cause I'm just like, good for you, man. Good for you. Don't yeah. judge people. Yeah. Good for you. Cause you're, you know, out there make it pave in your way like that's really smart I didn't think of that yeah you know yeah. maybe I'll do that yeah you, but uh I just thought that that was really smart and you know I feel like we should spend more time kind of like raising up our fellow artists I agree rather than, yeah you know I agree hoarding secrets it's it's all about intent because mm -hmm. like if you I don't know if you post things online but if you post a, a Star Wars piece of fan art, you're gonna get X amount of likes oh yeah but if you just want to draw a cool picture of like a raccoon or something mm -hmm. like Probably not so much if you haven't built a fan base that likes that. Or that, yeah. I have like paintings for of characters from my original stories and I will spend like 12 hours on a painting and I'm like, hey, look, it's so-and-so from my stuff. And everyone's like, ah, that's cool, I guess. And then I'm like, ah, look, another Kylo Ren. Yeah, more Baby Yoda, people please. people are like, yeah. oh, yes, yeah. yeah. My favorite thing, you know, because they already have an emotional uh, attachment yeah. to those things. But um, it kind of just makes me feel more motivated to like start a fan base for my personal stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the load is the 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 road is long and um, paved with sadness sometimes. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, you it never really works. Some you know, or it feels like it's not working, but you get there. Uh, any pointers on getting exposure? Um, fan art. Fan art. Yeah. yeah, fan art's a good way. Some people might. Um, kind of pick at you a little bit for it, but I do a lot of fan art. That's how I got I do, hired I on uh, Hellboy. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just love to draw him, and I funny. just kept showing the people there. Yeah, they, that's, yeah, that's they how I got hired for, uh, for Darkest Dungeon. I did two um, promotional paintings for their, for their DLC uh, because I loved the game so much. I was just like constantly painting their characters, and then one day Chris Barasa was like, hey, uh, you want to do this thing? And I was like, excuse me, let me stop crying and then I'll, yeah. I'll answer you. <laughs> yeah, um, so fan art's great. And, you know, I think you got to do your own thing, though, eventually. Mm -hmm. But but yeah. it's a great way to um, expose your art to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm making the transition right now. It's like going from, like, I used to do, like, just tons of fan art for a long time, and now I'm kind of trying to balance it to 50-50, and then I'll start moving into, like, tip in the scale a little bit. It's kind of what I'm seeing. I wonder what you think of this. Hmm. Um, Steve Martin stand-up comic. I think it was him that said be so good they can't ignore you. Yeah. So I think in, don't get wrapped up in the Instagram game and the mm -hmm. fan art thing too much. Just try to make stuff that's so uh, beautiful mm -hmm. and well made that people must yeah. see it. They must they pay attention to it. it. And that's hard. Yeah, it is hard. It's very so hard. I'm still trying, trying to do that. Specifically to do it, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think I think that if you if you're really enjoying what you're doing and you're putting that passion into it, then it it, it kind of comes about. Um, people uh, are asking like you know more about exposure um, uh, in the chat, and I feel like I say this I, I say this in the Adobe chat like maybe four times a month. Um, it's my same spiel that I always have about exposure and working for exposure. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love to know your thoughts on it, but I'm going to say it again because I feel like more people should hear it. Because mm -hmm. uh, I found myself working for exposure, in quotes, at the beginning of my career. Um, and I suppose if you want to get down to the nitty gritty details, there are situations in which that's cool because it gives you experience or whatever. But I think if a company is big enough that their exposure for you doing a free job for them is worth it. They should have the money to pay you for your work. Mm -hmm. 
You know, if you're working for, if, if somebody says, oh, I'll give you exposure and it'll be super great for you, if it's actually, if the exposure is so great that after you do the job, you're well off because you get so many jobs from it. They should it, be able to afford they, you. They, yeah, they should be able to afford your work. So if they can't afford your work, yeah. then that's, that's that. Um, I think that one of the hardest things I ever had to start doing was telling people no when they, yeah. you know, because you spend so much time like, oh gosh, like I hope somebody will commission me or I yeah. hope, you know, I hope I didn't quote too much or I hope, you know, the price is fine or whatever. And then you get to the point where, you know, you just have to start saying, I'm sorry, that's, you know, if, if you you're going to do it, if you're going to work for exposure, mm -hmm. uh, make sure it's calculated. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. In comics, there's a thing called pin up. So let's say you have a comic mm -hmm. and in the back there's like pages where big illustrations are and, and we all do pin ups in each other's books. So mm -hmm. if people are a fan of your comic, they would see a pin up that I did in the back. Oh. Oh, gotcha, and, gotcha. and that's fine. Do those kind of things. Yeah, and I think that's diff that's a little bit different. It's a little though, different. That's, yeah, but that's, that's like kind of feature. free exposure that yeah. you're not getting paid for. But it's probably mm -hmm. good for you to build your audience. Yeah, but I'm saying like if somebody says, "Hey, I need you to," nah, you don't know, do it. I need you to paint my book cover, and I'm not going to give you any money for it, but it would be super good exposure for from like the four people that are going to buy it on Amazon. Yeah. Like don't like like think about it for a second. You know, don't don't let the flattery of somebody approaching you about your work blind you to the fact that it's a real bad deal. Because yeah. I used to do that. I used to be like, oh my gosh, they want to commission me and they don't have any money, but it's so nice that they want to commission me. <laughs> and I would take a job that just wasn't worth it. Don't don't let that happen to you. Um, can't pay bills with exposure. Yes, yeah, so I got, saw a really good meme somebody wrote where they were like, um, here man, here's your exposure for doing uh, that art yeah. for me. And he runs outside and he walks up to a food truck and he's like, I'll take three hot dogs, I'm famished. And he's like, all right. Uh, here you go, man. He's like, here's some exposure bucks. And he's like, we don't <laughs> take this here, man. We don't yeah. take this. <laughs> is that a is that a thing that still happens a lot? Do, have, do people still want you to work for exposure? Oh yeah. Okay. I, I recently saw a post where um, somebody it looked like somebody was asking an artist if um, they would pay. You know, uh, I need I need uh, like a banner for my Twitter and an icon for my Twitter for fifty dollars. You know, it's a really good opportunity and all this kind of stuff. And the artist was like, no, I'm sorry, $50 is too much or is not, is, is way too low. I can't do, I can't work for $50. Mm -hmm. I would need you to pay me at least, you know, X amount of money. And, and the guy was like, no, I meant you pay me $50 to do my banner oh, because yeah. of exposure. And it's I was a great like, deal. Do you I have was that like, guy's that's number? the most bizarre thing I've ever heard in my life. Somebody, like if somebody approached you and was like, hey man, um, how about you pay me several hundred dollars and I will let you illustrate uh, the cover of my comic book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's because crazy. Because it'd be super good for you. That's crazy. I, did. I was like, some some people got like twisted ideas of what is like acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's a wild one. Uh, most of the people offering exposure don't have the means to pay me or the following to give me exposure. Yeah, true. Um, I, I think too, there there is uh, an interesting um, uh, avenue to take for trades though. Sure. Um, because I have um, had people do uh, work for me in the past and I traded them a branding. Sure. You know, we spent equal hours on the project and they did something for me and then I like designed them a banner for their Twitter account and then I had what I needed and they had new branding for their stuff and that was, you know, I spent the time and I got what I, what I needed out of it and they got what they needed out of it and that was fine. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do that very often. I've, I maybe do that once every year or two where I decide, yeah, you know, and it's it's usually because I particularly like a person's work and I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, we'll trade you goods and services, you know, that's okay. Um, but I mean, don't everybody in Behance be like, hey, no, I'm gonna trade you a, because yeah, <laughs> I'm probably your not gonna do that. Is gonna explode. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. $50 is a great deal, at least they're paying you. No, no, I mean, he wanted the artist to pay him $50 so that she could do his banner because it would be good exposure for her. So she's paying him $50 to give her exposure by it. She was, it was all bad, it was all bad. Um, subreddit choosing beggars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So we got uh, less than five minutes until the challenge uh, deadline. I'm gonna pull up the Discord here while you are working on that and make sure you know, just to check and see if we got anybody posting in here. We do actually have. Um, oh, we're gonna get to look at some art? We are gonna get to look at some art today. I'm, I'm a fan. Yes, yes. Um, but you, but you, I mean, you have about you have about four and a half minutes where you can keep noodling around uh, before mm. we jump. Because I'm gonna like wait until the uh, the deadline so they have all the time that they need to to submit it and all that good stuff. Um, also, technically, for exposure is yeah, that's a good that's a good subreddit too. That one cracks me up, but it also makes me a little sad because I'm like, why do people think this is okay? <laughs> There's some real bad deals on there. Just really bad deals. This is looking so good, like with that halftone texture and like those hatch marks and like all the little notches out of the uh, uh, the palm fronds mm. and everything. I'm so loving it. I also like like just how much it adds to the composition to have the little bird scribbles up there. Yeah. Like it's not even a lot, but it just having that little thing there just kind of ties it in and makes like kind of like forms Voltron there with like that you know the the monolith, Hellboy, the palms, and the birds. It just kind of keeps it continuously going there. That's good stuff, man. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted something up there to um, mm -hmm. move the eye around, and it definitely does it. And who doesn't love a good bird? Yeah. You know. Everybody's heard about the bird. I like. I like to. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard? Bird, bird, bird. Oh God. Sorry, I had to do it at least once. I've never. I don't think I've ever told that joke on here, and now I can cross that off the bucket list. That's great. Inadvertently. I like to add little areas of interest. So like. That, um, little, that little weed. Yeah, like. Uh, oh. It's just a thing, in, and and uh, you know, like around here, around here, I like to break the silhouettes of stuff up. Yeah. And um, you know. I, uh, sometimes I like a real smooth uh, silhouette, but um, you know, and I took little chips out of these, these fins. Yeah. Um, so I just like to add little um, things there. That, and, little, uh, that little desert weed growing off the top of the head is like great. Oh, I feel thank like you. I've seen plants that look exactly like that and I know it's more or less a scribble but mm -hmm. it's the best scribble for a plant I've seen. You know, like that that stuff just blows me away when it comes to work like this, where it's just such a high contrast, like black and white thing, like doing the silhouettes of things. Mm -hmm. And like, I know indefinitely what that is, mm -hmm. but watching you having created it, it's like not really what it is, but it is yeah, that's in a strange the, way. That's the beauty <laughs> of, 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 of art, you yeah. know, you can kind of, let the, um, you don't actually have to get in and draw everything yeah. in there. You can let the brush do the work. Yeah, it's good stuff. Surfing bird, yes, Alberto. Everybody, b -b -b bird, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> That's gonna be in the chat all day, I'm sure, today. No, I'm responsible. It's a great song, check I it out. I accept full responsibility, though. <laughs> it's a great song, check it out. Is that in Pee Wee's Big Adventure? Uh, it's in, uh, I mean, I got it from Family Guy because it was like a whole arc where he just was like playing that constantly. Oh, yeah. I actually had a, a sound system hooked up in my house and I had a phone attached to it specifically so that I could pull that prank on people when they came to my house. I'd say, um, I'd be like, oh yeah, Val, how you been doing? Yeah, I've been doing pretty good except the bird. What bird? Oh, God. You know, the bird. And oh. I would go into the whole thing yeah. and then I'd reach over and hit play. And then he'd be like, ba, 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 um, oh, and just go. Devil. And do, yeah, I'd just do it because that's what I was dedicating my life to at that point when that came out. Um, and I prided myself on getting people to ask me about the bird, like just, you know, tricking them into doing that. Um, we got less than a minute, so please, if you uh, have a challenge entry to post, please post it in the Discord. Um, please post your works in progress. Um, I'm gonna start at the top, like towards the, like uh, at the very first one that was posted today. So if you are still working on yours, you do still have some time after the deadline to put your uh, submission in there for us to look at by the time we get down there. So you do have a little bit more time, um, but please, if you are still working on things um, and you haven't finished it, let us see the work in progress. Let us give you some, some kind of, what is it? Preemptive feedback, mm. preemptive, a constructive criticism on your piece because it's really good for the art and we want to see what you're working on. We don't care if it's not done. This is a community 
kind of thing going on here where we're all just like creating and trying to get better at Photoshop. So it's okay if it's not done. Val, you are devious and I love it. You should have known this. You should have known this. <laughs> Somebody with the name Voodoo Val, you'd think a little bit of deviousness would come into play at that. Oh, I yeah. agree. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's next level trolling. I, I agree. I had a good time. Um, all right, that is our design feedback deadline. Um, this is so good. Like, I would actually love to have a print of this. Oh, this well. is like the kind of stuff that I would like to have on my wall. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm loving it. Um, but, oh, I am going to full screen our Discord here. Maybe we can pan over and check it out. Um, feral human bean. It's a great name, and bean spelled B. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. And so it's, yes, I'm imagining like a, like, just like a rabid pinto bean. Yeah, get a, you know. get a real wordsmith on our hands Oh, there. yeah, like, it, like a young sapling. <laughs> 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 to bring yeah, it back at least yeah. once. Um, but Feral Human Bean says, not perfect, but it was fun to follow along. Yeah, this honestly, I think that this is really great. I think you could probably clean up the edges um, around the shoulders and the collar a little bit. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. With the selection and then maybe feather it and, and uh, or you could take a mask, you make a mask and like, you know, kind of with a, like a soft round brush and go around the edges and kind of clean things up a little bit. But that's cool. You got your planets back there. You got your space back there. You look like a, a good space explorer. Um, I think he also put uh, like some green and kind of red lighting on the face, maybe? Yeah, that's, or, I like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I can live with that. Pretty neat. And go to the next one and see what we got. Uh, oldie, but a goodie. Let's see, selfie Sunday. Um, I think that this is a, oh, it's only 14 seconds long. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. Nice work, okay. GG, mm. who is that? Got some movement, Alberto Silva. All right, I see you, Alberto. All right, kudos. Um, uh, Anti Fufu, using the picture. General Voodoo Val, nice. Oh, cool. Old space station. I, I um, put my picture in the starter file. Yeah. I usually use pictures of myself in the starter files that I give out because I can't like, license a stock photo to myself and then also give it to like five, 600 people because we would have to license it every time. But if I own the image that I could just give them a picture, which I mean, maybe, maybe that's weird because yeah. I'm just like free reign to Photoshop my face. Um, but uh, people have been very kind to me so far. So, and I've been doing it for like a, like a while. So I think we're okay. Uh, but this is cool. I think uh, I like your, uh, your placement of the general vowel thing. I would, and I wanna know what you think. I would say when it comes to adding this general vowel plaque here, I almost kind of would want it level at least, like at least this far right side level with the other plaque, because then it would feel like it's sitting on the chest at the mm. same level maybe. Um, but that might just be like me personally, like just, just picking at it, but it kind of, throws my eye just a little bit because it's kind of like turned to the side and pushed over here. Um, but I don't know if you if you have any thoughts uh, on that, if you want to share anything. Uh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. And that maybe that's something I would flip the image and let that and inform see, me. Yeah. yeah, see if that works. That's usually what I would do actually is flip it. Always um, flip. Mm -hmm. I like the Voodoo Val, um, Voodoo Doll earring. That's not lost on me, GG. Very cool. Um, let's see, challenge one, my day job, he says, from Sean. Sean, that's great. Oh, that's pretty cool. You're not, at, wait, that, did you Photoshop your head onto an astronaut? Cause it, if you did, that's a pretty good job. Or you work for NASA, cause that actually looks like pretty decent, the way that that's Photoshopped on there. Um, loving the uh, little, Flare on the other side of the planet there. I think that's kind of a nice addition since the background and the planet are both so busy. It mm -hmm. kind of adds like an edge to it. But I almost wish that the background were just slightly darker. Yeah, to add more, because um, if you squint at the piece. Yeah, um, you can pick him out, but you can't really pick the planet and the background out. Like it, it this, the, the, the glare, the flare does add a little bit of it, but I almost want to maybe tone the levels down on the, on the background and give it a little darker quality. Um, I would add a bird too, maybe in the... Bu -bu -bu yeah. <laughs> Let's go on. Um, nice stuff, nice stuff. Um, Val joins Space Force, yes! 
Nice! Looking good. I would make a great Space Force edition. Actually, that's a horrible idea because um, I would just bring my lightsabers to work every day and they kick me out. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate the sentiment. Good stuff. Uh, nice replays. I guess the, like the basic um, gist of this uh, too was specifically like replace the background and then if you want add other space objects in the okay. back. So everyone's going to be like you know taking a selfie of themselves or someone else and and replacing backgrounds. Um, needs more time to actually be semi-realistic. Space station pick cutesy of NASA. That's cool. I'm just kind of like floating in on the side. I gotcha. Um, that's a really cool picture. Um, also, a resource that I want to share with you folks um, that I probably should have mentioned while I was doing the challenge. If you're still working or maybe you'd like to do another challenge entry um, and you're looking for images to use because you're not sure which images to snag, um, NASA actually has a huge database of free images where you can go because they take all their pictures and it's like public domain. Oh, yeah. Um, so you can actually go to the NASA website and go to their gallery and you can use their images of planets and ships and space and nebulas and all kinds of stuff if you would like to use that. Um, in fact, I highly recommend uh, going there and maybe bookmarking that page because all of our challenges are going to be sci-fi themed. Oh, cool. Um, so you will have many, many opportunities to use um, space themed photos. Uh, photos in your pieces. Um, I don't know what this is, but I'm into it already. Just a little fun to get started. How's the composition? Ain't no mound high enough when Voodoo Val is in the neighborhood. I like the Boss Hog glasses. Yeah, I, I, I do too, and they reflect the uh, sky, so that at least they were observant enough to, uh, yeah. to get that element correct. Uh, you know, I also got to commend you on the fact that some people, when they cut out glasses to yeah. add, yeah. they forget that the empty space, like between there, between the eye and the edge of the glasses, it's actually transparent. It's a different color. Yeah. Yeah. Some people don't remember to do that. Yeah. yeah. They just make it solid. And I'm like, ooh. Yeah, but, you messed um, up there. Yeah, but that's, that's good. It almost looks like one of those portals from Doctor Strange, you know, mm -hmm. in the corner mm -hmm. there. Like, I'm getting ready to pass through to like another dimension. Um, I would say uh, the use of blue and orange is always a great combination, when, especially when it comes to like action stuff. Um, I would say though that there are some areas here where it's like awful dark and I kind of want to see more, unless that's, you know, an intended where you're just like kind of like, I want to darken some, some places up. If that's what you want to do, that's cool. But I kind of want to like, open it up a little bit. I would have went either one of two ways mm -hmm. because the top of your um, uniform there mm -hmm. is, I would have made those two things the same value to where mm -hmm. they merge together or maybe made them a much different value. But they're like almost gotcha. the same value and I think whatever effect, um, I think you, you, you lost a dramatic, an opportunity mm -hmm. to have a dramatic effect there. Yeah, that would be cool. Well, so maybe try that. Who is this from? This is from uh, Valentine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe try that. Maybe try making the you know the jacket and the, the top of these mountains here the same value and see how that goes. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also like make them the same value and then put dramatic clouds in there. Too, oh yeah. So just kind of you know like it, it it blends and then there's like a little tiny bit of separation if you really want that. Mm -hmm. um, that could be cool. But a very interesting piece. Um, corgis make the best astronauts. I have to agree with you, I think, because this is great. Um, <laughs> I like how he just really doesn't know what he's doing there, though. Like, he's there, he's present, but he's also just like, who put me here and why? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's a, I mean, it's a clever, it's a clever um, image. I almost would like to see some shine on the... Yes, to place... To, to place, place it. the dog in the helmet. Yes, because without the without a shine on the side of the helmet, or like you know, and then like a little more subtle shine here, depending on where. I guess you'd put the shine here mm -hmm. because the light is coming from this area, mm -hmm. um, and then put like a just a smaller like little rim light on the bottom there. Um, uh, get some like good bounce light going over here. It would make it look like the dog is on the inside of the helmet. Right now, it does kind of look like you did like a little cookie cutter and like popped the the head onto the body there, um, but that shine would add a little bit of three dimension. Um, and you could also, you might also um, actually consider flipping 
the dog head horizontal because there's more light on this side than there is over here because mm -hmm. the light source for this dog is coming from uh, the right side and the light source for the the suit is coming from the left side. So you may want to swap those. Um, let's see. Hey, challenge one complete but with error. Sorry, you have to rush work. Oh, that's fine. I'm in, the, I'm in like the side of the spaceship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kind of peeking out. I see. I like that you even added the. Yeah, that was that's quite nice. Yeah, when it I I do see where you mean um, um, errors. I would say that there are some places where maybe some of the selection was a bit too feathered or a bit too um, uh, hard. So you kind of like lost some uh, some stuff there. Um, but I would say just you know when you come back from work, go through and and clean it up a little bit, uh, and and. Uh, get some of those edges rounded out. Uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. That's like more of a scene. Like, cause I, in my example, I kind of just removed the background of the, the picture and just like made like a cool picture. But this is like, you really made a space explorer. Mm -hmm. Like there's a story here. Like I'm waiting on the bridge of some ship, like kind of looking out at earth and the moon and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Uh, hello everyone. My first challenge attempt. Ooh. That's actually pretty cool. Looks like I'm on a space station. For a first challenge attempt, that's that's pretty that's pretty good. Um, it also looks like you color corrected from the original image. So because my face was pretty washed out in the original picture and it was, it was also kind of like bluish because of the filter that was on like the the top. Um, so it looks like you did like some some nice color correcting to make it maybe look a little more natural um, in there. And then you put a light source in that uh, match the image, uh, which is cool. Um, what do you think about like the um, light source, like the light hitting the face versus the brightness of the light source he added into the corner though? Cause I, I almost feel like it's not, mm. the light on the face is maybe not as bright as it should be because yeah. the source light is pretty bright. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough one because I also feel like the light is coming from almost directly above your face. Mm -hmm. And the the bloom effect on the top left. Yeah, that I don't know about that. I might I might like usually so when I when, when I'm adding something into an image where I have to match the light source like I'm doing like a photo compositing sort of thing, typically what I do is I put my image in there and then what I do is I, I you know, def kind of uh, figure out where the light source is coming from and then if I need to make something look like it belongs is I sample the color from the light source and then apply it to the item that I'm putting in there instead of vice versa, instead yeah. of like putting a light source in and then adding a separate light source to make it more obvious. So what I might do is maybe move this light source kind of up a little bit, maybe between these two here since the light is coming more down onto the face mm -hmm. um, and then take some of that brightness and put a little bit of it on like the the very tops of all of the major points that would catch light. Um, but I, I mean, uh, I think that that's just like kind of constructive criticism. I think it's really cool that you've kind of, um, you've done a pretty good job considering the image you had to start with to make it look like it belongs in the scene. Um, so nice job. Um, how many more do we have? We do. Ooh, oh wow, ooh. they got busy. Yeah, you did. They really, did, they really. When I said just post it while we were looking through, they really did that. So I'm gonna kind of try to trek through a little faster because we do have limited time today. Um, so uh, this is from uh, Durat. I'm brand new at this. This is fun to learn, though. Awesome. Is this you, um, Durat? Is this an mm -hmm. uh, image that you found? Um, also, I do um, highly recommend since you've got this sun here that you, and you've kind of um, cut around or selected around the flares. I would suggest using an ellipse tool and um, cutting out the sun itself, and then uh, like cutting it from this layer and placing it, and then taking this like the ring of all of the sun flares and applying it on a blending mode because then you might be able to apply it in a way where like all the background wouldn't show, mm. but those flares would be bright and kind of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Um, you might get like more of a, this sun is like 
definitely like a like a you know like maybe you started with a PNG or like a very isolated image, um, but that's cool. Uh, my effort for today's challenge, uh, very nice. I like the dramatic kind of cloud effect with this. It looks like you composited two images together to make a um, a background, and I also actually really like that moon image. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think I like. In a way, it's almost like you, I don't know if you color corrected this whole thing, but even though there's a lot of different elements going on, don't you think all the colors like work really well? I do. I think they I look really nice and warm and, and, and relatable. Like they all relate in, in a nice way. Um, oh, here we go. There's a little collage of what he used. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's neat. I would never have thought that those are the two images that you used, honestly. Yeah, let's, let's see the, the, uh, the final one again. Yeah, so those are the clouds. Oh, yeah, not a bad, uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, not a bad blending of the... Very the unique. Um, CC created my own background and planet. Not the soccer ball one. Tried a few different blend modes. Okay. Let's check it out. Okay. So, oh, so this planet here is the one that you made. So you made your own background there and put a planet in it. Awesome, awesome. And then did... Uh, uh, made everything like kind of green with blend modes. Very cool. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a nice experiment there. Um, oh, and here's the original file, so we can see what it looked like before. Uh, I also want to see. I think I have my. Okay, I'm just making sure we're doing okay on time here. Um, this is from Gerard. Is that me? I think Gerard went and found one of my other pictures on social media and put, put a different picture of me in there. That's cool. It looks like I'm just kind of smirking, though, while Earth is getting ready to get, like, sucked into oblivion. Yeah, yeah, you're like, see you, suckers. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. y'all should have got out when you had the chance. <laughs> Voodoo Val with the suit. Yeah. <laughs> getting, escaping into where, though? Like, I'm by myself. Uh, Jokes on me. Hopefully that corgi will lead you into, uh, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'll get one of those stations, the space stations that they uh, um, put me on. Maybe that's the, the thing. Uh, here's an entry for day one. I like that you replaced the Star Wars with a bit of Star Trek down here. Also, these colors work pretty cool. Like, mm -hmm. that's some pretty cool. Uh, hit the space bar. Is that a catchphrase you say? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. I don't say hit the, I mean, did I say hit the space bar today? I'm not sure. I think it's good sounds catchy. I mean, I hit it in between words when I'm typing sentences. Yeah. Hit it frequently. Sp yeah, totally. Smack that space bar like right in between. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I feel like all I feel like all of us do that. Maybe that's all, all of our catchphrases. Everybody has that bar. catchphrase. Yeah. Unless you have an iPad and there's no space bar. My iPad has a space bar. Does it? Mm -hmm. I have like a permanent like oh, yeah. thing plugged into I have a case for it that makes it into a laptop essentially. So it's like always has a space bar. Hmm. Um, Marie, day one, outer space. Nice. This is Dang. dope. That's dope. That's so cool. Like, you got, like, reflections and stuff on here. You really look like you're in that, uh, that space suit. I almost, I almost want to say that some of the reflections, I don't know how many of the reflections you added yourself, some of them are, like, a little busy, mm -hmm. but it looks like you're definitely on the other side of that glass. I, I got one thing though that's hurting me. Go for it. Tangent. Tangent. Uh, yeah, is the it the Saturn and the and astronauts suit the are so close? Mm -hmm. I would either completely overlap them or move it farther away. Yep. Because it it there's just a, a tangent there, mm -hmm. you know. And also with the star on the other side of the the thing, I, you got to watch those big elements and keep them separated or overlap them. Yep. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a tangent is, I would say tangent is it's one of those like kind of eye twitch moments where uh, something is. Um, I wish I had like I. I mean, I could open Photoshop now and show off, but I don't want to get into that on right now. But it's kind of like if you have if you're drawing like a like a door mm -hmm. maybe, um, and instead of drawing the door where it's, you know, you have like a little welcome mat and you have the door and then there's like a gap between the top of the canvas and the top of the door. Mm -hmm. If you like drew that top of the door all the way up 
to the pixel, like right there at the top of the canvas. Yeah. And yeah. they'd be like, why is this directly yeah. on that line? That's a weird thing. Yeah. Kind of, you know, like they're just weird little moments of like how certain elements in a painting can fit together. Um, and I think that if I were you, what I would do is I would actually make Saturn much larger sure. and then turn it to the side just so. Um, and then I would put it behind her and have it going behind her and off the canvas a bit and kind of fill that space. Um, that's what I would do. Um, but that looks cool. It looks very cool. Um, here's one from Tan. I actually really like these planets. They're like marbles. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. And another color correction kind of on this. I think you, you kind of matched like more of the colors here. I think that matches my eyeshadow actually. Like this purple one, that's really cool. Is it, um, snap in, is it a snap in order now? <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. You yeah, that wasn't it. really a good one. That, there we go. Just like, ooh. Um, uh, so very nice. Let me see how we do it on time. We've got just like maybe five minutes left. So I am just going to, how many? Of, oh, we only have like four more. Okay. Um, so this one, um, honestly, from afar, I thought that was a picture of me. That's not a picture of me, but that's what I look like when I have a big ponytail. Up. So I was like, where did they, f I was kind of thinking, <laughs> I, yeah, saw it yeah. I saw it earlier, I was like, where did they find a picture of me like this? Because I don't have a picture posted of me like that. <laughs> um, but nice, I like that you have a, a little, like she she's, doesn't need a suit, clearly, because she's mm. awesome. She does not need a suit to be out on the moon. Um, but she's just kind of like, oh yeah, he's over there, you know, doing his spaceman thing. Um, but very nice, that was from Ken Colley. Uh, Van Damme designer, 10 years old. That is so cool. <laughs> he made like a whole fight scene composite. And it says Adobe team on the side of his helmet. Oh my gosh. Van Damme, this is great. Well done. Well done. Um, and silly super fast trial. Honestly, I feel like I want this to be my Twitter banner. <laughs> That's maybe my favorite one out of them all. I think this is my favorite one too. Everyone else has done a fabulous job, but I think this one, if I had to choose one that is my favorite, I'm gonna choose the like Sonic Val. Like I'm, time to go fast. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Um, I'm, I have no, I have no criticism. It's just a funny, it's a funny concept. Yeah. Um, that was from uh, Clever Devlin. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go all blue from Baja Krom. And this is the last one. Very nice. Got that shine there. Um, that looks nice. That looks good. You got a little flare on the back of the helmet there. Good stuff. Um, all right. Thank you guys, everyone, for participating and submitting um, your challenge entries. We have got just a, a few minutes left here, um, and those few minutes I will actually pass over to you, sir. Oh, um, gosh. Why don't you uh, maybe show them your painting one more time so sure. people can see what you did and let people know where they can find you on social media. Yeah. To, you know, keep checking you out. So, so here's the piece. Um, I think I've brought it to a level of completion I'm happy with yeah. without adding any color. Yeah. Um, Very nice. If anybody has any questions or comments, shoot them out there. Um, you can find me at Stephen Green with a PH, two under, uh, that's Stephen two underscores green on Instagram, Stephen Green is, on Behance. This is what it looks like on Instagram here. And um, you can also find uh, links to his Instagram and his Behance uh, down below the, the video right. player. Um, and then Tim has also posted them yeah. um, uh, in the chat there. So you guys can check him out. It's Steven uh, with a PH underscore underscore green mm -hmm. um, and give him a follow and check him out. Are you gonna, I assume you're gonna post this on Instagram? Yeah, I'll post this. So I'll we post can this. see a kind of a closer version for ourselves yeah. um, on there, but. Um, and also on my Instagram, there's a link to my original art if anybody wants to get uh you know oh nice yeah yeah the so, originals oh very yeah. cool so you know if anybody's an art collector and is interested in that kind of thing okay um, yeah yeah but, yeah i'm um, i'm interested in this sort of thing so i may have one of these at some point because these are really really cool oh, thank you. And um I'd, I'd like to keep up with people so reach out and and yeah. uh you know if you have a question or anything i'll be glad to uh Best place to do that on Instagram? Yeah, or? Instagram or Stephen Green Artist at gmail.com. You okay. know, any any way, I'll Twitter. I think I'm on there. I don't use Twitter, but you know, I'm on and there. You so. find it, yeah. Um, all right, well, that's where you can find him. Um, and that is what he did uh, for us this week. It has been an absolute pleasure. It's been being cool. Able to host you, yes. We did it. 
It was super it. fun. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. We have got the XD Daily Creative Challenge with Julian Crespo coming up after uh, this, followed by an awesome uh, couple hours of XD design. So don't go anywhere because we're not done today um, and we will uh, be taking our leave, but we'll see you next time. Adios everyone. See ya.